This is the next video in my series on Adobe Captivate 2019 Update 2, also known as version 11.5. Today we're going to be talking about branching. Of course, branching can mean a lot of different things in e-learning, but in this case, it refers specifically to this type of scenario that you see on my screen here. We have what I would describe as a main table of contents page and we have a bunch of chapters or modules that you, that learners can click on and visit those chapters. And the idea is that once they've finished one of those modules or chapters, they're brought back to this page where they can then launch the next in the series. And only once they've clicked on all of the chapters or modules will a final quiz button be made available to them. So in the past, how we would traditionally do this is we would create a series of user variables to keep track of what the learner has clicked on. And we would write a bunch of advanced actions, conditional advanced actions, uh, to, ch to check to see if they have clicked those items. And it would be a little more time consuming. And of course, if you were a new Adobe Captivate user, you might be a little intimidated by having to write all of those scripts. So this now is so much easier. It really, all you need to keep in mind is uh, to properly label certain objects and slides. And we're gonna create some branching groups, I would call them, and make sure those are labeled correctly as well. So let's start off this process. The first thing we need to do to make this slide work is we need to go into our properties inspector for the slide itself and give the slide a label. We're gonna call it branching. And I'm doing this all in lowercase here. And that's the first step. The other thing we need to do is we need to set up our shapes used as buttons. In this case here, I've got chapter one through three in a final quiz. Couple things uh, to, to note here is that the on success action, which would normally be uh, some of those advanced actions, uh, we're just going to set it for no action. And uh, the main thing we need to do is we need to label these appropriately. So chapter one, I'm going to call it literally chapter one. I'm going to use all lowercase letters here. Same thing for chapter two. Spelling counts in this case because uh, this is all about consistency between what you type here and what you type elsewhere as well. So we've got chapter one. Let me just double check that. Chapter one, two, and three. And we need to label our final quiz button quiz by itself there. The other thing we need to do to this is so that it doesn't appear to the learner until the users, until the learners have clicked all of these buttons. We need to make this object not visible in output. So I'm just clicking on this icon right here and turning off the visibility in output. Now, I'm gonna take this a little step further. One of the options that was introduced in an earlier version of Captivate was the ability to have a visited state on buttons. And what that means is that if you've already clicked this button, we wanna change its appearance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually select chapter one here. I'm gonna go into the state view button, which you can see right here. And this will allow me to add that fourth state. There's already normal rollover when the mouse goes over it and down when the mouse clicks it. But we're going to add this visited state. It's an inbuilt state of buttons and shapes used as buttons in Captivate. But it isn't turned on by default. So I'm going to turn it on in this case here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my library where I have an icon of a check mark, and I'm just simply gonna place that on my slide next to this button here so that when they have clicked on chapter one, there'll be a visual indicator that they've done so. I'm just gonna do the same thing for chapter two and three. So we'll go into the properties inspector here, go into state view, add our visited state, and from our library, grab that check, and lastly, with chapter three, we'll add the same uh, visited state and same checkbox. Good. Now, for that visited state to show up when the users or when the learners revisit this slide, which is important, 
we need to select all of those shapes and in the properties inspector make sure that retain state on slide revisit is checked and that's good to go so again just to recap we've we've called this slide branching as you can see here in the properties inspector we've added the visited state which is just an optional aspect of this interaction but more importantly we've labeled our buttons chapter one chapter two and chapter three you can call these anything you want but you just need to be consistent with the branching groups that you create in a moment or two and our last button of course is the quiz it's labeled quiz and it's set not to be visible in output so next thing we need to do is we need to create our branching groups so all of the the slides that make up chapter one i'm going to select them before i do i just want to point out that i have a next button on this slide if you want to provide your own navigation controls, which I would recommend in this case, make sure the action associated with the final slide in your slide group or, or branching group, the action is continue and not go to next slide. Otherwise, it would just go on to slide five, six, seven, and so on. In this case here, we want this button, this continue button, to take them back to the branching. So it needs to be set for continue. As well, I've gone into my project dropdown menu and gone into the skin editor and make sure you turn off show playback controls. Because again, if someone's using the forward or back buttons in the play bar, uh, they'll be able to break out of this uh, particular type of interaction. So I'm just gonna turn this off so that there is no border, no play bar, nothing. And we're gonna group these into branching groups. So this is gonna be my first branching group here. I select all the slides, right click and select group and select create. Now the group is untitled, but if you go to the properties inspector into the label field, let's call this chapter one exactly how I wrote it for the label for the smart shape button. Next, we'll select the, the slides that make up chapter two. We'll right click, select group and create. And again, make sure we're consistent with what we labeled the button on the main menu slide. We'll do the same thing here for chapter three, group, create, chapter three. And lastly, I have an introductory slide as well as all my quiz questions. I'm gonna hold down my shift key and select all of those. Right click, group, create that group. And again, it needs to be consistent. So call it quiz and hit enter. And now I think we're pretty much good to go. So let's do a preview in HTML5 and see how this works. So here we are with our branching example. I'm gonna continue. So we have chapter one, chapter two. Notice the quiz button is not visible presently. So I'm gonna click on chapter one. I'm gonna click continue, continue. And it brings me back to chapter one here and you can see I've got the visual indicator to let me know that chapter one has been completed. I can still click chapter one if I wish, but uh, I don't have to. And let's go to chapter two. So now chapter two is finished. Let's do chapter three. And we're returning to the main menu. And of course now our final quiz is available to us. And we'll click on that and start the quiz. And of course we've learned everything we need to know. And we'll just hit all of these questions and get them 100% correct. And there we go. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.